So let's have a look at Maxwell's equations. These are the four equations that you will normally find associated with Max Maxwell's equations. They were derived from, I believe it was 20 or, or more equations. Um, and I believe it was Oliver Heaviside that um, compressed them into, um, into four equations. And so uh, we have Gauss's law. Now this is uh, Gauss's law for electrostatics. And uh, the second one doesn't always have a name, but uh, I, it is often referred to as Gauss's law for magnetism. Okay, this is the divergence of B equals zero, um, Faraday's law, and Ampere's law. And so I'm going to go through each of these uh, a little in a little more detail. Not too much, but just to give you an idea of what each of these equations is for. So the first one is Gauss's electrostatic law, and this is the law for stationary charges. So the law reads that the net electric flux through any closed surface is equal to 1 over permittivity, that's this here, that's the permittivity of free space, times the net electric charge enclosed within that surface. So here P is the total electric charge density. So the, this little P, I don't know if it's called P, but it looks like a P to me, and it is charge density, or charge per unit volume. So here you have a picture of what this law is talking about, and here you just have one charge. So the charge density would be one in this case, but you could have many charges enclosed within a surface. And uh, basically what this is saying is uh, the net electric flux through any closed surface. So there's a surface here, S1. Here's a surface here, S2. Here's a surface here, S3. So it doesn't matter which surface you enclose, the net uh, flux through any closed surface is going to be um, directly proportional to the number of charges within that surface. So that's basically what this law is saying. It's basically saying, so if the charge density changes, then the flux will also change. Let's see. Now we're going to talk about Gauss's, uh, I'm going to call it magnetostatic law. So this is the electrostatic law, and I'm going to call this the magnetostatic law because really this is about magnets that are not in motion. Okay, so uh, this law states that the net magnetic flux through any closed surface is equal to zero at all times. Okay, this is because the magnetic field lines are continuous loops, and therefore all closed surfaces have as many magnetic field lines going in as coming out. And hence the net magnetic flux through a closed surface, any closed surface, is zero because you're going to have if one is coming out then one is going in if one is coming out then one is going in um, and it doesn't matter what surface you pick or where you pick it because these are closed loops there's always going to be one coming out and one going in as opposed to here where you have uh, field lines going out but not coming back in or they could be going in the other direction so depending on whether this is a positive or a negative charge. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. The divergence of B equals zero, that's what this is saying. So now we have Faraday's law of induction. Okay, so this is the induction of current flow in a conductor. So Faraday's law of induction says that when a magnetic field changes, it causes a difference in electrical potential or a voltage that can uh, make electric currents flow. So here we have a picture of uh, an inductor coil and a magnet being inserted into and out of the coil. And as you can see, um, the voltage is changing depending on whether you're pushing it in or pulling it out. Now, if you pushed it in and stopped, then the voltage would go back to zero. And if you pulled it out and stopped, then the voltage would go back to zero. So only when the magnet is moving or changing do you get a current in the coil. So that is Faraday's law of induction. Okay, 
Ampere's law is um, the so this so Faraday's law is the law of induction of current flow in a conductor, and Ampere's law is the law of induction of magnetic fields. So the first part of Ampere's law states that uh, the magnetic field created by an electric current is proportional to the size of the electric current with a constant proportionality equal to the permeability of free space. So basically it's, uh, it's saying uh, it, that the first part of Ampere's law is this part here uh, saying that the, um, the current, uh, that the magnetic field created by a current is proportional to the, to the current flowing through the wire. And really this is current density. This is current density. This is the amount of current flowing through the wire per unit time. And the permeability is just a, what they call it, a constant of proportionality. And really it's a calibration parameter. So, um, so Yanel goes on to say, observe that Ampere's original law, which was a mathematical description of experimental finding. So experiments found this, okay, relating the magnetic field to the current density producing it has been changed by Maxwell by adding a supplementary term to the right-hand side of the equation. That's this part here. And this is often referred to as the displacement current. So this was before Maxwell, this here, and after Maxwell added you know, this, this part to the equation, the displacement current. Okay, so... Um, Ampere's original law allows the calculation of magnetic field produced at a point in space by currents flowing along some other curve in space. This has experimental roots in Oersted's Oost, I'm not wrong how to say that Oersted's great discovery that an electric current produces a magnetic field in the space around it. If another term is added to this equation it follows that the magnetic field can be produced also in the manner described by this new term. So Maxwell added this term, and this term it means that a magnetic field can also be created by this term. So adding this extra term to Ampere's original equation is equivalent to saying that a changing electric field okay, can produce a magnetic field all on its own. Maxwell's modification of Ampere's law by the addition of this supplementary term is not correct. It's not correct. Um, so why? Why is it not correct? Such an effect that a changing electric field can produce a magnetic field has not been observed experimentally. It's never been observed. It's only been assumed. To see how absurd this is, observe that you obtain a magnetic field even if there is no electric current at all. So, so for J equals zero, if you make J equals zero, then the equation becomes this. Okay, the equation becomes this. Since the electric charges, static or in motion, do not appear in this equation, this equation says that a pure electric, varying electric field, a pure changing electric field in time can create a pure magnetic field. This is pseudoscience because experiments show that fields are created by charges. An electric field is created by a static charge. A magnetic field is created by a moving charge. Every time there is a field, this field can be traced to an electric charge, either at rest or in motion. Okay. The equation above, however, implies that charges and currents are not necessary for the creation of fields, and that a time-varying electric field, E, can directly all by itself, without other means, without the aid or mediation of something else other than itself, create another field, the magnetic field. But according to Gauss's electrostatic law, okay, the first one I showed you, okay, the electric field um, can change in time 
if and only if, okay, if and only if, charge density, charge density changes in time. But this is not apparent anymore in Maxwell's modification of Ampere's law. So um, adding this term um, is, is not correct. Okay, so, so here's the problem, okay? So Gauss's electrostatic law says that, so the only way you can get a divergence or a change in the electric field is by changing the charge density in time, okay? But here it says that a changing electric field can create a magnetic field. But how can you have a changing electric field unless you have charges somewhere in the field. So that is the dilemma created by um, this addition to Maxwell's, uh, to the Ampere's law. Okay, it's a contradiction. Okay, so um, Yonel goes on to say, Maxwell's displacement current is not an electric current. If there are any supplementary currents to be added in Ampere's law, and we will see later that one supplementary current must be added, but it's not displacement current. These currents must be added as currents and not as something else, such as a varying electric field, because observations show that moving electric charges and only moving electric charges produce a magnetic field around them. A current or more accurately, current density, because Ampere's law is written in terms of J and J is current density, is defined as J equals charge density times velocity. So um, long story short, there's no magnetic fields unless you have moving charges. Uh, a changing electric field cannot directly create a magnetic field because you can't have a changing electric field unless you have the charge density changing uh, in some manner. Okay, so um, that I will end this section at this point, and uh, this will be continued in the next video.